What's going on everybody? I'm back with another Toto video. The last video I did was very successful. So shout out to everybody that has watched it and is watching this one. This is an upgrade version I'm going to be taking a look at today. So let's get right into it. So this is the A6Y premium version. It has six horizontal physical buttons, which I really like. The other one that I had did not. Um, this model is the two gigabytes with 32 gigabytes of ROM. So it's pretty much doubling what I have now. The operating system is a Toto's own AICE 9.6, which was released November 7th of 2019. And it's customized based on the Android 6.0 Marshmallow. So it's pretty much 6.0 in essence. Systems dimensions are about seven by four, it looks like. For the inputs, it has one reverse camera input, aux audio video input, four channel RCA out for connecting a aftermarket amp, um, subwoofer out, does not offer any video out options. It does not come with a backup camera. However, this model did include a microphone. This unit cost about $219 and right now you can save an extra $11 when you apply the coupon on Amazon. My link is right below in the descriptions. So go ahead and click on that to check it out. In the box there's a Wi-Fi cable, microphone, harness, WSBs, GPS, mounting brackets, warranty information, the manual, faceplate, two screen protectors, one frosted in HD, and one silica packet. Keep everything fresh. I'll be using this old PC power supply to actually power up the system, install all the apps, and then I'm gonna take it out to the car. I've got the yellow and red wires connected to the yellow wire, and I have the black ground connected to ground, of course. So this is the complete setup. Let's go ahead and power it on for the first time. This is how long it'll take in real time to actually get the system powered up. While we're waiting, feel free to go down below, hit the red button, subscribe to the channel. We've got more videos like this coming out in the future. Okay, here's the main interface. Now, the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna sign into your Google account if you have one and start downloading the apps. When I first started, I thought I could just start downloading the apps that I wanted on it, but the system is gonna wanna download all of the Google apps that are already pre-installed, so you gotta go through that. That usually takes about 10, 15 minutes depending on your Wi-Fi connection. You can use a Wi-Fi hotspot from a mobile phone, but that'd probably take way longer than it's supposed to. Let's go ahead and get the time set really quick here. Make sure you pick your time zone. Here's about the device settings. It'll show you the Android version CSS 6.0, the build number, MCU, Bluetooth version. To update these units, you gotta go out to a Toto's website to get the latest downloads. I won't be doing that in this video, but I suggest checking out their site anyway. Here's a quick look at the accessibility options. You got large text, high contrast down there. I usually don't mess with any of this stuff. I kind of leave it factory, but customize as you will. Before you get too deep into installing applications, I would highly recommend putting in at least a 32 gigabyte SD card I've got a 32 in there and I'm going to go ahead and format it for this unit. It's coming out of my old unit. If you want to check out the video to the old unit, I'll post it in the upper right corner somewhere. You'll see it. So go ahead and hit erase and format and it will start the process. The bigger the SD card, the longer that it'll take to format it. All right, we're done with that part. So now it's asking to move all of your apps to the external device, which is the SD card. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the more apps that you have, the longer it'll take to move them over. Let's go ahead and hit the move button to keep this going. There are certain apps like system apps that you cannot move to the SD card. So keep that in mind. Looks like we're done here. So I've got most of my space back out of the 32. Not a big fan of the radio widget, so I'm going to go ahead and trash that really quick. There we go. There we go. As far as wallpapers, I am still using the My Beach HD. I had a paid version, but I think I'm using a different Google account um, for this unit. But I still like it. It works even better on this stereo, being that it has double the RAM, double the ROM. And it's really cool. It looks good at night, looks good during the day. So I would highly suggest it if you like a high res, you know, live type of wallpaper thing. Go ahead and check it out. And there's others as well in the market. Pressing and holding on the screen will 
pull up all of the windows, wallpapers, widgets, and the settings, which is actually pretty convenient. Even though this is a quote-unquote premium head unit, it still does not play Netflix. I searched in the store for Netflix. It did not have it. So I went out to a website and manually downloaded the APK, and it still won't let me install it. As you see here, I'm having to enable unknown sources to install apps that way. But it's not working. Maybe you would have to download an earlier version of Netflix from the web somewhere, but the version I installed, as you can see, it just sat there forever, and it never installed. So while we're talking video apps, let's test out Hulu. And by the way, I don't watch videos while I drive. I just think it's really cool to have them. So Hulu loads up. You can scroll through the GUI pretty smoothly here. As you can see, there's no jittery, no lag. Let's fire up a video here and see everything looks good. No complaints. Hulu confirmed. While we're at it, let's go ahead and give Prime Video a whirl here. This one takes a little longer to load up, but let's fire up a video here. This will work differently depending if you're using home Wi-Fi like I am right now compared to a mobile hotspot. But Amazon Video is working as well. Let's take a look at the quick charge feature. This wasn't on my old unit, but it's pretty much saying that the standard one's going to do 1A charging. The quick charge is going to go 2A. And the quick charge port is the one that's located right on the front of the unit. It's got a little cover over it. So TPMS is the tire pressure something sensor. <laughs> um, I'm not going to dive too deep into this. I'm just going to show you what it looks like because I don't have the equipment set up so it can monitor my tire pressure because my car is a little older for that. But it does have this option available. And if you do have the hardware for this system, you got to set it up prior to installing this head unit taking a look at the on-screen touch buttons you got the back button the home button then you have the closing all the apps button you can hit the trash can or swipe them up or down to get rid of them makes the unit run a little bit faster um, that button brings down the swipe down menu which I need to start using more you can do a quick EQ with that button and you can turn the unit off, dim it, not turn it off, but just dim the system, make it brighter, medium, that sort of thing with it. Just kind of mess with it to see where you like it. Right next door to that is the mute button, so you can quickly mute the audio if you had to. Next, let's take a look at easy connection. I always have bad luck with easy connection. Maybe because I'm using the iPhone, I'm not sure. I don't really use Android phones, and these type of head units are geared more to an Android phone so I got my iPhone gonna hit screen mirroring here after selecting iPhone from the menus it says EC mirroring I'm gonna go ahead and click that button on my phone and here's where everything stopped working so I got a connection there's nothing on the screen still nothing on the screen okay you can see I'm still connected my phone and the Android unit is connected to my home Wi-Fi, so I'm not sure why that's not working. Um, maybe I have to pair the unit with my phone's Wi-Fi. But to tell you the truth, I don't even use this feature because it's not really solid enough for me. And by all means, if you know any tips or tricks, feel free to jump down in the comments and let me know. Um, I'm no means by an expert at this, so I'm open to comments, suggestions, feedback, all of that. Um, as you can see, still, I'm not having any luck, so I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. But I wanted to show you some of the options that you can look through. I did notice while looking at some of the options that they do favor the Android phones. But it's an Android unit, so whatever. Here's a quick look at the pull-down options, which are actually really handy. I've learned that if you hit that speed-up button like I just did, it clears all the memory, and it'll actually clear your live wallpaper if you have one set it, it did about three times I couldn't figure what's going on so moving on to Bluetooth Bluetooth on this unit can be a little confusing if you don't read the manual or know what's going on here there's Bluetooth 1 and there's a Bluetooth 2 now Bluetooth 1 works as the hands-free call answer with a 2 DP streaming audio feature and Bluetooth 2 is geared for tethering the internet 
Um, you can connect gamepad controllers for kids, and it works with the OBD2 sensor, um, as well as the TPMS, you know, the tire pressure module, and the file transferring option. So you got two different Bluetooths for two different things, which can kind of throw you for a loop. I'm using Bluetooth 2, and it's pretty much doing everything for me at this point. So it's up to you how you want to configure it. The button right there in the middle lets you get to all of the apps on the system. And from here, you can hold them down. You can pin them to the main screen and configure it how you like. Um, but this is pretty much everything that I have on the system this far. And this is really everything that I use. Let's take a quick peek at the sound settings. From here, you can turn the loudness on, the touch sound. You can get to the equalizer, listening position. So let's take a look at the EQ. It's a nine band EQ with 12 section adjustable frequencies there. So customize as you will. Here's the listening position. That's what that looks like. I've never touched that yet. The subwoofer output option. I've never changed any of this because I've never had a sub hooked up to this particular unit in my car. So this is what the standby button will do just shows the time and the date kind of handy if you just want to turn your screen off really quickly and see I hit that speed up button and it killed my background again so in that case let's go ahead and this time turn on ocean HD um, this one I think I may have paid for or have gotten for free somehow so I have all the options and settings this one looks really good at night so I suggest this one as well Let's take a quick look at the YouTube app. And while we're here, let's go ahead and check out one of the best YouTube channels on the planet. Let's see how fast this loads. Oh, that wasn't bad at all. So there's the other A6 video right there. Go ahead and check that one out later. As you can see, I do have other stereo review install videos. So if you're interested in different types of Android units, there's that as well. I also review um, high quality sneakers and I have amazing vlogs right there so go check it out always keep a file manager app handy just in case I want to add like a new screensaver from a flash drive or install an APK the quick pick button right there will let you find all your pictures really quickly and it kind of lets you apply your photos as a background so let's go ahead and do that really quick just to test it out that's the Colorado incline. I also did a vlog video about that. Um, so let's see which one. Um, we'll go with the car. And I'm sure you can just go up in the upper corner, hit set as. And uh, we'll do quick pick wallpaper just for the heck of it. And it's going to want you to crop it. Let's just roll with that for now. And that appears to be my background. Let's scroll around and check it out. Uh, let's go home. Yeah, that's the background now. So that's probably a little easier on the resources just to still, but I'll probably switch between that and the live wallpaper. As I mentioned before, there is a video in right there at the very bottom. I usually test this with a modded PlayStation 2 just to see if it works. And it's also really fun to play a modded PlayStation 2, you know. I don't actually play video games while driving, of course, but you could have a passenger play the games as you drive or whatever, pull over, it doesn't matter. The little play button down there will take you right to the movies. I've got music videos, movies on this USB stick. Um, you can scroll right there on the side, pick any movie that you want or pick any video file. I've tested AVIs, DivX files, MK, for MKVs, MP4s, and all the video files I tested, they work pretty well. I don't condone watching videos and driving at the same time for safety, of course, but hey, if you got a passenger or a kid in the back seat, um, this is a great option to entertain them. Getting to the music, you can hit that music note right there or hit the music icon in the lower right. Again, as you can see, scrolling through everything is really smooth. Once you pick a song, you can return to the home screen. It will continue playing and it'll also display it right there in that music widget and you can go through the tracks, pause it, change it. So this is the old unit. As you can see, it doesn't have the six physical buttons on there and everything is touch screen, which really drove me nuts. So pretty excited to get this one out. Here's the new one. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly 
place this in there, I do not have to wire anything because the harness that's connected is exactly the same minus the steering wheel controller. This is what the cable looks like. And again, it did not come with my old unit. My car doesn't have any steering wheel controls, so I'm not gonna worry about setting that up. As mentioned before, this unit does include a mic, which I won't be setting up in this video. I'll, I'll probably do it later. When I'm in the car, I usually chat with AirPods anyway, so, but I might set it up later. So this is where I plug up the rear camera in that port, and in the upper right USB, that's where the front-facing USB camera. I also made a video for that, so check that one out as well for the front-facing camera. All right, let's go ahead and finish setting up this unit. Here's the perspective, what it looks like when everything's plugged up. This F-Cam app controls my rear camera, and my camera can be on the whole time I'm driving while playing music. The DVR app is what activates my front facing camera, which can record, as you see that red button right there, it records all the video in 720p. Go ahead and check my video out for that. It's pretty in depth. It shows you the features of it. That's just me physically rotating the front facing camera with my hand. It swivels, it almost does a 360. It's, it's pretty good. Torque Pro is another very popular ECU application. It reads all the data from your vehicle from the ECU chip I have right here in my hand. Let's go ahead and get that plugged up. This ECU, well, at least in my car, doesn't snap in very firm. I think it's just the nature of my OBD2 plug right there. But, you know, it is what it is. It works. Go back and open up your Bluetooth settings. I had to use the passcode 1234. I tried 0000 and that did not work. 1234 worked for me with this particular OBD2 adapter chip. Now going back to the Torque Pro app, the revs are activated and it's talking to the OBD2 chip now. This is what it looks like when the chip is working properly. Torque Pro is an excellent app. I recommend it to monitor your car's health. You can clear codes and that sort of thing. So go ahead and pick it up in the app store. So that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, went from the old to the new. Um, I recommend the unit if you're coming from something slower, one gig to two gig makes sense. Go ahead and comment down below if you have any information that I didn't mention. Um, like the video and peace out, guys. Take care.